Commander Masters had an absolutely crazy release weekend. This product was available on time at store shelves everywhere and nobody was buying the product. In today's video, we are going to discuss that sealed product problem that Wizards of the Coast has, as well as what's happening in the secondary market for the singles in Commander Masters. If you're a player who is hoping Commander Masters will continue to fall in price and offer you a better deal, it's best if you brace for impact. Welcome back everyone, MTG Moxman here and thanks again for hanging out with me on my channel today. Now guys, before we start the video, a big shout out and thank you to everyone who's been subscribing to the channel. We are less than 2,000 subscribers away from the 20k subscriber party. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. So if you enjoy today's content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Turn your notification bells on as I do upload daily content each and every day. Thanks again for supporting the channel. Now guys, Commander Masters. A lot of stuff went wrong here. We've been talking about the last month. I mentioned it months and months ago when we saw the first spoilers that I really thought was an overpriced product. As soon as we saw the pre-sale prices, that has followed through and has become a very true thing. Even as Amazon and other stores were dumping prices down and slowly racketing down their price, trying to find where the market was, you had LGSs stuck at the price they bought it from distribution. With the lack of MSRP, it's led to a whole series and hosts of problems where you don't really know where something is supposed to be in the pricing, so you're kind of guessing on what you think you can charge, and that's where things get really wrong for a lot of people out there. Now, as the product doesn't sell, and as it sits on the store shelves at your local LGS level for the draft and the set box, because in this video, and at the time of this video, I gotta be honest, the collector boxes are selling and are moving, okay? I've seen numerous boxes, I've watched box opening videos, I've talked to people at the store level, there's quite a few sales there, so good on that product. Even though it's only four packs, at least it's selling and stuff's being open. Now, a lot of LGSs who had a lot of products canceled on them and have tons of this stuff sitting at the, at the store level, they did crack a lot of boxes to get this stuff to market to make it available to players. But there are several issues that are going to arise from this about 60 to 90 days from now. Not right away, but it will be coming to a store near you. Number one. The box prices will continue to fall for a little bit longer. You can see them ratcheting down because there's just so many of them and it was just so poorly received that you gotta find the floor somewhere. But after we find the floor, that doesn't mean people are gonna buy it. Just because the odd box will sell and the market tries to stabilize the price at that level, it doesn't mean that that product at that level is actually going to sell because we already have the Wilds of Eldraine coming, which a lot of players are excited for, and of course, the Lost Caverns of Ixalan later on in the year, I still say it's gonna be like a journey to the center of the earth type thing. I can't wait to see if I'm true on that. But when we look at the product, forget the seal boxes now, put them aside, put them up on the shelf, just like your local LGS is, and now look at the singles market. These cards are selling. Those jeweled lotuses are popping off, okay? They are being sold everywhere, prices are stabilizing, and everything looks great. Doubling season, hundreds and hundreds of copies selling, but not thousands, hundreds of copies but not thousands. To get into my top 10 videos on the weekend, you know, it would take thousands of sales to be there, and Lord of the Rings is clearly still ruling the roost, which means selling four or 500 copies of doubling season at 40, 50 bucks doesn't make the list, and will it continue to sell at that market price? There's a whole series of questions you should be asking yourself about the stability of the market, because when these cards disappear, that doesn't mean the store is opening new boxes to refill it because it costs them so much to open it. They're just trying to cut their losses. At some point, they're gonna be at the break-even mark for their store and they're not gonna open anymore. Those let it sit on a shelf. I'm not saying that's good or bad, but that's what's gonna happen. They're just trying to cut their losses, which means all these medallions that are super cheap right now, 10, 12 bucks at your local store, at least here in Canada, I think a few of the stores had them for like 12 to 15 bucks. The most expensive one I think was 25 for the for the white one, either way, super cheap and affordable right now for a lot of players. So when you have those players going out and buying them and slowly gobbling up the market, because we haven't had medallions for a long time, I think back in 2014, um, they're gonna slowly start rising in price and doubling season will slowly etch up, at least until uh, Ravnica remastered, right? It'll get reprinted there, but you're gonna see things 
hardening. The prices are going to harden up and start actually ratcheting up a little bit. So some of these cards, which seem super cheap now, will probably start actually gaining back some of their losses faster than anticipated because the boxes were so expensive that nobody's going to keep cracking them. The initial waves are going to be out this week and they'll start being bought by players because there's just so much that looks like it's a good price and everyone's going to dive in and start gobbling up the product because it's at a, at a price point players find acceptable and then it's going to start disappearing and that means the prices will start to go up faster than expected. So normally I would tell you guys to wait like the 90 days plus, I'd say wait less than 30 days. Look to see what the price point is you're willing to accept and dive in and buy them. Buy the cards you're looking for because I think these prices are actually going to reverse a lot faster than people are expecting. Money will move on to El Drain as soon as we start seeing more of the spoilers. Doctor Who stuff is already starting to like get a lot of buzz for the suspend mechanic and the reverse with the Soltevi um, digger card with that song girl. Crazy stuff out there. So that will start drawing people to the shiny new bling, which means nobody's going to care about Commander Masters. But those secondary market cards that people do care about will actually start recovering market losses faster than what people realize. And this is where a lot of people are going to not be thinking about it right now, but they're going to come back 120 days from now, 160 days after they've gotten some of these other cards, came around to the Christmas, and they're like, hey, I feel like buying myself a few treats. And these all got reprinted in Commander Masters. They're going to be super cheap, but they're not going to be. They're going to be more expensive than you, you anticipate because not as much of this product was opened. Now, does that mean that you can expect to see an Amazon dump? I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. I don't care what other YouTube content creators say. If it's too much on the store shelf, too much sitting at a warehouse, they've got to get it off the books. And their supply management stuff is still in the 2021 to 2022 phase. They still have overstocks of all kinds of stuff, including this set. I guarantee it's sitting at distribution level and at the warehouse level. They got to clear it out somehow. It's going to end up at Amazon and it'll probably be a bargain basement fire sale for a brief moment. So if you're a person who's willing to wait and check that out when it happens, go ahead and gobble it up. Now, the other thing I noticed from a lot of you who sent me Discord messages, emails, and I feel bad about this are all the people who wanted to draft it, who actually showed up spending $46, $47 US, around $65 Canadian to draft and play at the local LGS level. And a store that can hold like 120 people had six people show up. Another store that could have 48 people had four people. This is bad. It looks bad on Wizards. I feel bad for the LGSs who are trying to drum up some business. It just, it doesn't fit. The shoe doesn't fit. And that all comes back to pricing. And I know we have a new year coming up and hopefully Wizards has learned some lessons. It's like they're living in the twilight zone of yesteryear. Okay? And they're trying to figure out where it's all going to fall. Because even some of the hints they gave us for 2025 and 2026, that relation of like, hey, we're still getting some sketch ideas, but here's some of the things we're thinking about for all these different, it's almost like they're throwing ideas out there to see if you people out there like them. Do you like that idea? Is that going to be good? Should we, should we go ahead and make that set? It, it may not be true, but that's how I felt listening to Rosewater and them talk about it. Now, going forward, I'm not sure if they're going to even continue the Commander Masters product line or Masters products in general. It would make sense with how they've done the reprint equity right now and how far they've been pounding down on their price values, that maybe they give it a rest. Maybe they've learned from this and they can you know, take that information, extrapolate it and say, look, we can't go this route. You know, Avenue A is blocked because nobody's you know, accepting the prices. We've got to go through door number B, door number C, maybe even try door number D, either with new production lineups, new kind of way of throwing some cards out there or different gimmicks to generate revenue because the price point we're trying to get for master series products and these reprints are not going off now. They're not being accepted and they're being rejected by the player base. That is something I think they need to do. It is better to have more smaller products that you can churn over quickly than a big marquee, big bang item that you really are like staking your life on and it doesn't go off and it fails. And you're, you're stuck with all these LGSs at that level saying, oh, I spent like $30,000. I'm in the hole, $26,000. What am I supposed to do now? And then the store closes and Wizards loses one more of, of their local LGSs who they say they support and believe in and bring such an amazing group of players together to play every week. Well, how about you support those stores? How about you do more to show that you care what happens at that store level? And that will go a long way with the player base. I'll be curious to see how they play that out. I just think they'll give Master Series products a break. Maybe they'll go back to like uh, Commander Legends 
something like that, but more in tune with what Commander Legends should be and not just the Baldur's Gate deal. Because Baldur's Gate, I still don't think it was a bad set. I think they just made the dragons and things too hard to get. I still say they should have added the Extortionist and the Mana Drain to give some lasting value to the set. But we'll see how they do it in the future. I mean, we know next year, Modern Horizons 3 will be the big set. So I want to see how they play that off and what cards they give us. Because that set will be all about, are they adding fetch lands back in? Are they adding enough nostalgic, cool new cards being being brought in that really bring players forward or new mechanics and ideas or iconic characters like Urza or possibly even Mishra. I, I'd love to see how they decide to take that route. Maybe a new Sarah would be awesome. Those are cards I would look forward to. I don't know what you guys would say. You know what? What cards would you like to see in Modern Horizons 3? Slam those down in the comments section because that's kind of cool to think about as well with upcoming sets. If they can't get off with a Master Series reprint, maybe they can give us a new Modern Horizons series products because it has the name, right? And if they put enough new good cards in there, maybe players will buy it at a higher price. I'll be curious to see because I think they're going to try to charge an extra 50 bucks. You know, I, I just I just have that inkling that that's the way they're going to go because it's done well twice in a row now. Third time's the charm. We can charge even more. Either way, Commander Masters, the singles are selling really well until they run out. The sealed boxes are going to sit at a store shelf until they get clearanced out, mainly from Amazon. Local LGSs are going to bite the bullet, probably open a few more boxes and then shelve the rest and hope for the best. Uh, it's, it's a crazy world out there, guys. It didn't go off the way they planned. Nobody expected it to be this bad, but at least the singles are selling. That's the good news. The singles are selling quickly from all those collector decks being opened up. All the Commander Master collector packs, those are selling well, which is great to hear. So thanks again for hanging out with me today on the channel. Remember, slam some comments down in the comments section. Thanks for allowing me to entertain you each and every day. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow for another video. Have an awesome day today. And of course, guys, a big shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons I have supporting my channel each and every day. To the wonderful viewers, all the way through my patrons and YouTube membership supporters, guys. These are the people who make it happen each and every day. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons. You guys rock. Welcome back to the Ramble Jamble. Glad you guys made it to the end. Uh, pardon me, I'm going to drink a little water. Now, it's funny. I got this information. It took a little while because I actually wanted to get most of the store's info in. And a few of them were kind of perturbed. I'll be honest. We're here at the end. Nobody's watching. Um, you know, they were really upset with how this all played out. And, and rightfully so, I think. And hopefully in the future, you know, I really think some of them have now, as they stated, I've learned my lesson. I'm going to order a lot less. I should have learned after 30th anniversary how things were going to go from the players. But understanding that now, Moxman, I'm going to order a lot less. I can always reorder from my distributor later on. I should have learned my lesson. So basically they're saying let the distributor take the hit and wait and see. But they're always worried that if a product goes off well, distributor will actually raise their prices, right? So it's kind of like a eh type thing. So I'll be curious to see how this plays out going forward. But it looks like a few of these LGSs feel the same way where they're just like, we're going to cut back on ordering on all these bigger products. The regular standardized stuff, we'll keep to our regular order. We think it's going to be good, and we're kind of excited for it. So, I mean, it's interesting to see it all play out, right? I feel bad, though, at the same time. So it's like, ah, I'm here. I get to report on it. I get to talk about it, have the conversations. But some people are out there living it and going through, trying to figure out how they're going to navigate the losses they're suffering, and I feel bad for them. So, guys, thanks a lot for hanging out. Thanks for being here at the end of the video for the Rambo Jamble. And, yeah, I drank some water. I feel good. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to walk out that way now.